Hello and uh, welcome to another look at a game through the Panda Perspective and as that line gets worse every time I use it I uh, look forward to it and every time I have to do a video from here on in. Um, today I'm going to take a look at my biggest disappointing in gaming 2010 or Crackdown 2 as the developers decided to call it. Um, there aren't a lot of options to play about with, it usually audio, controls, display, that sort of thing. Um, your arenas is your online multiplayer versus type mode. And the main game which is, well it's online co-op if you want it, but thankfully you don't have to be forced to do co-op. Whereas with the original game you could do co-op and both of you progress. Everything I've heard about this is only the host progresses and everybody else, well they can join in but they don't exactly up their stats or anything like that or go through the game. So, jumping into the main game, if you hit into play there, you can start the game yourself, join, you can join somebody else online, and then you can go in, I'm going to jump into the game I've been playing, and the start is, as you can see, 16 hours, 27 minutes, I know the game's are disappointed, but I'm still dis addicted to it like hell, um, and let's jump into the gameplay. Your customization options are drop down dramatically, you've only got four agents heads to choose from and I'm pretty sure this guy wears a mask anyway. And then you can get your colours, well if you pre-ordered it you can, you can be black, you can be Xbox agent, you can be agency blue, I don't know which ones came with the game but I'll stick with the basic gun metal anyway. Okay, so you get into the game and the first thing I noticed when I picked the game up was um, this is the exact same city you were in the first time. Yeah, it may look a little bit rough around the edges. There's different things kicking about as in the fact that some of the buildings have been uh, demolished. But other than that, you have just jumped into the same game that you were playing beforehand. Um, the only difference is that now instead of three different separate factions of gangs, you've now got only two. Um, one of those is the Cell, which is apparently a renegade terrorist group, which, uh, well, I've no idea if it is a renegade terrorist group or not having beaten the game, but given the way the first game went, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then you've got the second faction, which is the Freaks, which are these genetic mutation thingy me which, uh, well, they're kind of like souped up zombies, they can run around a little bit, they don't have guns, they only really melee attack or some of them can split, spit acid. But to be honest it doesn't really add anything to the game that it had beforehand. The only difference is that on the night time you're going to get attacked more likely by freaks and during the daytime you're going to get attacked more likely by the gangs and things like that. So, um, throughout the game instead of going to find gang hideouts and everything you've got to find these things that as you can see on the top of the screen there, these, I don't actually remember what they call them, they're some form of navigation points that fire things into the sky so you can use these ultraviolet beacons. Basically, you've got to go in and you've got to collect those. Uh, they're usually defended by the cell. Um, you activate those, or alternatively you can go and take on the cell bases, that's the red thing on my hood in the bottom corner, that um, you basically go in, you activate... Uh, helicopter drop-off point thingamajiggy and then you've got to defeat all the cell in the area before you can take over that checkpoint. The other little things that you've got to do in the game are these freak breaches which is the yellow thing on my hood which uh, I was actually right next to and um, basically you've got to close them down and that will be the the first shot of the contact. Now this is one that is quite annoying because as you can see it's almost daytime so if I don't kill all these freaks before it becomes daytime, I then have to wait until the game goes right the way back round again to night time before I can come back and attempt to close the freak breach. One of the additions that they put into the game was these UV guns, or UV gun as it should be, because literally there's the shotgun and that's it. There is a UV grenade I believe, but uh, for something that's supposed to be an integral part of the game, fighting these freaks, you have one weapon your shotgun and then good old fashioned explosives which um, tend to be the best weapon on the game something that makes a big bang because everything else, the weaponry and everything is pretty damn poor your best bets are your grenades and your rocket launchers and I can't believe I would ever say that because the first game I thought the weaponry was quite good and I much prefer to use the guns and my fists ahead of everything else this one, give me a great big explosion from a grenade because other than that it ain't gonna happen so anyway, to continue with the gameplay, basically the game is very similar to the last one, which is one of my um, bugbears really. It's similar but not as good, if you know where I'm coming from. Um, this is one of the cell locations, so obviously I'm going to get attacked and beasted while I'm around here because there's lots of bad guys around there. 
Um, one thing, thankfully, the game does still have in it is the uh, the green orbs and the blue orbs, which is the main reason why I've had so much play out of this second game. I have a serious addiction to collecting green orbs, which uh, is probably going beyond uh, what it should be. One of the introductions, however, with your green orbs is these rogue orbs that run away. You might have just seen it on the side of the screen there. Um, personally, I think they've been added to the game to do nothing other than seriously annoy the people who's chasing them. I've got a fully upgraded agent here and it can still be a nightmare trying to catch them. Because um, they basically just run away into illogical places where you can't get them. Or sometimes you'll jump in the air, land on top of them and they won't run away at all. So there's not really much point there. There's driving versions of them as well for when you're in the car. But basically, um, what annoys me the most about this game is the fact that, for example, Factor 5 had 8 months with the Nintendo GameCube that had only just been developed to create Rogue Squadron 2. One of the best games I've ever played. True that. This game allegedly took 8 months to make. And what they've done is they've taken the original game, which was excellent, and made it worse. The um, firing controls are no longer as accurate. They were bad enough on the first game, but on this they're, they're pretty damn bad. The choice of weaponry is atrocious, because uh, in the first game there was far better weapons, far more weapons. On this it takes an age to get them, and by levelling your agent up you unlock weapons. Why? I have no idea. Um, and basically the only thing that's worth, that really to me has been improved is the explosives, when you're using the rocket launchers and things like that. Um, but as you can see on the left hand side, I've got my fully upgraded agent. He does a couple of new things, like for example this wingsuit, which, well, even then, it seems like it's been added for the sake of adding it. It doesn't particularly do anything for the game. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really disappointed with this game. Um, so much so that I still haven't even played the multiplayer yet, but I think I'd better show it off because I'm running out of time. Okay, well this is the online mode and I already don't like it. Um, it's just a extension of the, the main game really with the, the mucked up physics and everything. Um, basic red versus blue team deathmatch that I've come on to there. But um, basically it, it's one of those you just jump around the same city fighting each other. Yeah, you can get helicopters and things like that. But uh, it, it's, it's not for me personally. I, I don't think Crackdown ever was a multiplayer deathmatch type of game. I think it's been added for the sake of having multiplayer deathmatch on it and really there's absolutely no need. So I'm going to quit back into the single player mode to quickly sum up the last things I need to talk about. So to sum it up, to me Crackdown 2 plays a lot like what I would expect Crackdown 0.5 or an early beta of the first game to play like. Um, while the driving controls are pretty much similar and standard, um, I don't like the way you unlock things in this game. Um, I don't like the way that the difficulty has been weighed up because um, now you can actually go onto the map screen and see where all the orbs are. I mean, I got all 500 on the previous game and I found, felt it did feel like I'd achieved something. Whereas now I can actually go onto the screen that will show me the location of where all 500 were. Um, same with the blue orbs. Um, I don't like the fact that to play the entirety of the game you've got to risk having your identity stolen by going onto Facebook to get the uh, the rubber duck grenades or whatever the hell they are. Um, I don't like the way that for these races that you used to have a time limit for um, and it used to tell you what the time limit was, now it doesn't. I mean, this is an example of the driving orb, I mean that's, dri that's flying away from me there and yeah I've mucked up, I haven't been able to get it. But at the end of the day, there's no point in it being there. I've managed to level my driving up all the way without actually collecting more than one of them. I've collected one of those and about five of the other agility orbs. And there's no need for them because at the end of the day, you don't need them to level your character up. So all I can say is, for Crackdown 3, because as I say, I've got a healthy obsession with collecting green orbs. For Crackdown 3, can we actually please have an updated version of the first game with a similar sort of weapon structure, um, maybe better lock-on features and things like that? Um, but other than that, it's one of them. If you enjoyed the first game, you are going to find things here you like, but you're going to find just as many, if not more, that you're going to absolutely hate. Um, if you're thinking about picking this game up because you think it looks decent, get the first one instead. It'll be a lot cheaper and you'll probably enjoy it a hell of a lot more.